Hey there guys, it's Joey for Runes 101 and this is my witchy vlog for the Rune Weird. So I'm going to precurse this video by saying I am aware that in most heathen traditions the Rune Weird is considered null and void because it's a modern invention and a lot of people who follow that path refuse to work with it at all. And I was in two minds at the beginning of the week whether or not to work with it. I actually wrote the following. I wonder if this rune basically being an amethyst will have any effect on the energies. Amethyst is my spirit stone, helps me to connect to the divine, so it should work within the idea of fate and divine connection which the weird is supposed to represent. Uh, the weird is the norns, past, present and future cosmic power of fate, in the lap of the gods, a void, a gateway, everything and nothing. That which is destined and cannot be avoided, the voice of the gods will invariably be made manifest. So, I was aware that this rune is somewhat frowned upon by certain people and I thought to myself, well, if I go ahead and carry it with me and the energies I'm picking up are literally from the amethyst stone which I'm so connected with then that's no bad thing so I decided to carry on as this is the very last week of these runes and a lot of interesting personal relating information kept coming up there was a post about the fox being an omen of Native American healing power, shape-shifting, cleverness, observation skills, cunning, stealth, camouflage, feminine courage, invisibility, uh, ability to observe, unseen, persistence, gentleness, swiftness, wisdom, reliable friend, magic, invisibility, learning to be invisible is a very important part of your life, be still and quiet and the idea of a shamanic journey. At the beginning of the week Celestite kept popping up which is tied to the throat chakra and crown chakra. It helps you access the angelic realm urging you towards spiritual development and enlightenment. I felt the need to do a Celtic cross tarot reading with the Wild Unknown deck this week with a citrine cluster and the celestite cluster that I kept seeing everywhere. I also burnt my Nag Shampa Midnight Incense and the Licorice Candle from Oregon. I'm not going to read the uh, tarot reading, but it was very in-depth, very personal, very appropriate for the time in which I read it. It struck home. It was very spiritually accurate. So the following is my words, all rights reserved, my intellectual property. I want to run into the wild, shifted in shape. I want to race into the wood, not quite myself. I want to dance over the sea, be someone else. I want to be free. The next day. I've been seeing seagulls everywhere. I've been seeing them a lot recently, so I thought I'd look up their meaning. In Native American, they were considered spiritual messengers from guides. Many perspectives to consider. In their own sort of habitat, they are a strong community. And they show us how to ride the currents of mental, emotional and physical world. The following day, it was dolphins and orcas. All of these being sea related it was very weird for me. I obviously have never really lived very close to the sea at all, despite being on an island. Closer than some people obviously in major continents, but I, I don't get to see the sea very often. And I wouldn't be... you might see dolphins. I'm not going to be seeing orcas unless you go to the sea life sanctuaries. Um, the dolphin ones are all about selflessness, helping others. The orcas 
pictures all have a sense of humour around them. So I decided to put my thoughts first about what these could mean and then read up and research. So, dolphins selflessly helping others, community, play, love, joy, give freely. Orcas, strength hunters, survivors have a sense of humour in order to survive. And the sea connection being emotions, mysteries, unknown depths. So then I went and researched it and the f following points seemed important. Dolphin, relish water both physically and mentally. Go along with your natural feelings. Call forth what you need and desire. Communicate. Orca. Guardian of cosmic journey, soulmates, a monumental sign, spirituality, healing, astral travelling. Call on Orca when you are seeking connection to your twin flame. And then the next day, I was thinking about how 8 was always my lucky number and you turn it on its side and you see infinity. Uh, the following quote seemed beautiful from women who run with wolves. Within every woman there is a wild and natural creature, a powerful force filled with good instincts, passionate creativity and anxious knowing. Her name is Wild Woman, but she is an endangered species. Crows bring messages from the universe, start listening. That was another message that came through. The following um, sort of drew on the Japanese side of, of my influences, which was uh, Kayoka Sugetsu, I believe. Flower in the mirror, moon on the water, something that is visible but cannot be touched. The subtle and profound beauty of poems that cannot be described in words. This is my own thought. Uh, all rights reserved intellectual property of me. I don't want to be just a strong woman, I want to be a wild woman and not in terms of modern social conditioning. A woman of the old wild of primal dark places. The following is a quote from Edgar Allan Poe which seemed relevant. Deep into that darkness peering, long I stood there, wondering, fearing, doubting, dreaming dreams no mortal ever dared to dream before. A lot of artwork being shared on my wall at the moment from others is uh, about the Morrigan art, poetry, etc. Most of which I have seen before or already have that as part of my wall, but it's a beautiful reminder to bring me back to myself. I also felt the importance of the sanctity of movement this week, of dancing in prayer, honouring the goddess, giving up yourself, your movement, your sweat and energy and a physical offering to the Morrigan. The sanctity of silence in the face of situations that require it, or overwhelming power of silence in spells performed only via movement. I felt I needed kyanite, which is in shot, um, help you find your path, get back on track, balances throat chakra, enhances psychic abilities, helpful for those making a transition because of death. So light, mental clarity, joy to a heavy heart, self-worth boost. Smoky Quartz, my seer stone, psychic ability, protective grounding, removes any negativity and transforms it into positivity, as well as some low and gross incense, which is to do with mental awareness, clarity, focus, psychic awareness and visions. Okay, so obviously the throat chakra came up on a number of occasions. And I have mentioned it in previous weeks that quite frequently it's it seems to be a source of, in my case in particular, a power centre, a magical spiritual centre for myself. I'm very comfortable with words and talking and I hum and I sing as part of my magic, working all the time. And I can be a very over vocal person. I don't have any trouble expressing my th my thoughts and feelings and I obviously believe honesty is the best policy. This week has sort of gone along with counterbalancing my natural flair if you like with the throat chakra with the idea of balancing that out with listening to my inner intuition as well as embracing in moments of silence again which makes sense because it's a spiritual stone for me even if the energies of the weird might have been a bit off, but um, as far as Amethyst is concerned, it's my spirit stone, so being silent and listening to messages from the divine makes perfect sense. I've also been musing over the sanctity of movement, like I said, 
and quite frequently I think you know gestures are so much more potent and silence can be so much more powerful than words that are thrown away and in the Celtic tradition they considered things to be so important that they had a completely oral tradition so you know the power of words and the power of withholding words of being silent in fact and just denying it denying words in some respects can be an even more powerful situation than acknowledging and verbalizing she said verbalizing her experiences <laughs> So there's obviously been a, a, a good deal of protective spirituality going on at the minute. There's the, the smoky quartz. I, I felt the need for three more smoky quartz. And they're absolutely stunning. And, the, you know, there's been that element of bringing me back to myself, reminding me who I am a little bit, bringing me back to the Morrigan again, just through pictures and art. And um, I felt very connected when I was... Um, blade dancing this week with the Morrigan and that's something personal that I do and I, I don't feel the need to discuss that at length. There has been obviously a little bit more water imagery and animals con connected with the water imagery this week which is unusual for me like I said and, and the appearance of them was interesting very interesting there have been some interesting connections this week with things like that and then last but not least is that sense of wanting to be a wilder woman of wanting to be more connected to the old dark places of wild forests and woods and that modern society does something to us we're all yearning for something older and more primal and more nature based than the world we live in. The over sanitized, structured way of thinking about things. And I even thought about this as I was thinking what it, uh, people would. Um, take my meaning from wanting to be wilder, wanting to be a wild woman and in modern society you can think of it's going to bring up pictures of someone who's drunk all the time or sleeping around all the time and that's not something that I'm remotely interested in at all and it's completely missing the point and I think that's the problem with a lot of modern societies it, sort of puts people in these boxes and if you don't fit in them then you're weird and you, you know there's something wrong with you and why wouldn't you want to uh, be like that and I don't know it just it doesn't sit sit with me so I think going forward I'm going to then now be embracing the energies of the ogre moons which are more directly obviously linked with the Celtic path and I think those are going to have an even more resounding message effect influence as I carry them with me or meditate with them and that sort of thing going forward so I think and that will be um, personal that's not going to be part of the runes group by the way that's going to be just me doing that seeing as uh, the year and the day group has started and that's going to be taking up a lot of people's time with that a lot of it for me is a refresher, so I'm happy to do the Ogham stuff as well. And I think that will shine a lot more light into how I go forward. Engaging with the runes this time around has been incredible because every time before that I've tried to engage with the runes, I've just not been able to do it. And I had two or three sets in my lifetime before the Amethyst ones. And I had wooden ones and mixed gemstone ones and something else. And I just couldn't get on with them. And I, I was, you know, and the reason being, I think, is that I was going about it wrong. It's like, admittedly, they are Nordic in origin. But if I tried to just connect 
purely from that and not realizing that I had to connect through my own pathway and you, you know understanding them in terms of my own experiences is what allowed me to connect with the energies which can let's face it the energies can be universal no matter the origin of the um, stones themselves the energies behind them can be universal and I think over the course of all these weeks I've got some incredible information some fantastic experiences and some really in-depth spiritual information I'm really pleased with how it's gone over the over the past weeks so that's it for this video many blessings